Just like that, okay. Sumner oh, of shit. Dead Lakes in the building. Yeah, hell yeah! Hell yeah! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Hell yeah, dude! We appreciate you joining, man. We've actually been trying to get the, you and and the band on for a long time, but we appreciate Sharp Toe and helping us set all this up. Uh, for those that may not know you, sir, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug or promote anything you'd like. All right. Somebody grab me a beer. Um, sorry, <laughs> gotta get a beer on the way here real quick. Excellent. Stone Cold 360, let's go, Excellent. baby. Um, but yeah, I'm Summy from Dead Lakes. Uh, we live in Seattle, Washington. I currently reside in Tacoma, Washington. It's really sick. Um, we have dropped a couple songs recently. Uh, hopefully you guys go check those out. They're pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and we got a lot more coming in the beginning of 2023. Yeah, that's basically it. Random question I'll, to get started, but is that yeah, Shaq that? dunking in the Phoenix Suns so, uniform? It's actually uh, Charles Barkley. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a limited pressing uh, that it, from the '90s. Uh, yeah, and it's got the nice sunset and all that. I thought it was beautiful. I have a. I'm from the Southwest originally, so my whole room is like decked out with Southwest style uh, sort of stuff. And I'm a huge NBA fan, so it was like the crossover was there, baby. You know what I'm saying? So you're a Suns fan, but how'd you end up a Carolina Panthers fan? Oh, dude, I'm 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 a fake. Like I like to. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing: is uh, I like vintage clothing and stuff. So like I honestly, and I grew up like kind of a nomad. Like my mom moved us around. It's just me and her, like every couple years so i never had to get attached to a place really in that way so i'm really i'm just a fan of of like the nba the sport in general um of basketball and then with like other teams it's more like does does it look cute you know what i mean i believe the suns are playing my lakers tonight by the way i'm just saying I, oh, I are those are, are the sun is the suns your team no the, the lakers are my team but i know that okay, okay. uh devin booker was ruled out and anthony davis is out for a month so Somewhat of a yeah, fair that's fight. Crazy. I'd he say. can't. Yeah, he can't stay healthy. It's uh, it, and I feel bad for him. You know what I mean? Like, it would be like going out on every tour and like blowing your voice out the first week, and everybody after the first week of shows is like, oh yeah, he he, he can never keep his voice right. You know, it would that, suck. That would definitely suck, dude. How long have you been making music in general? Like, and can you just describe your first musical experience? Maybe it was in high school. Maybe it was before that. And what what did you do like in your first musical experience? Whoa, wild. Um, well, first musical experience, um, I would say middle school. Uh, my uncle was he was he's got uh, Asperger's, so he kind of like stays to himself. Never really had like an adult like too many adult jobs and whatever. And like so like, but he was like a genius at anything he put his hands to when he got to it. So. When I was in like middle school, he kind of took me under his wing, and he was really getting into audio engineering. So me and him just made some really terrible like like hip hop songs when I was like in sixth and seventh grade. Uh, so that was my first like real musical experience, to be honest. Um, I, I joined band um, as well, like in middle school, like and I played trumpet and baritone. So, oh, so you're, you're yeah. a man of many crafts. You can you can you can dabble in a bunch of things. It seems. Oh, I just love everything, man. I could dabble in anything, you, any genre, whatever, man. I'm I'm about it. That is awesome. I, I just love it. My uh, my co-host today is Michaela. Michaela this is Sumner. Hi, Michaela. Hey, Michaela. I like the Hello Kitty. That's that's sick. Thank you. Yeah, it's tough. That's <laughs> tough. Michaela, what question do you have for Sumner before we play? Uh, before we play stamina. Um, what have you been jamming on the side lately? Okay, so uh, I ha I don't know. We 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 don't obviously like tour that much, so I'm not exposed to like too much rock music in my time. Um, so really, what I jam is like a lot of I love new music, so I always check out like New Music Friday, my release radar, Discover Weekly, like all those every week. Um, but I've been jamming like SZA's new record a lot recently. Um, I think that one's great. Um, what else has been coming out recently that's really good? Oh, that new Metro Boomin record was pretty wild. 
Uh, so I like that. Uh, and then there's this band called Young Culture who like our manager also manages and they just put out a new record and it's really, really cool. Um, oh, and the new Thousand Below. I got to plug that. And then last but not least, the new Avoid record. So all of those are Speaking so tough. of there's Thousand Below, so new yeah. music dropping. how was yeah. the tour? Can you give me a crazy tour story? Oh, Thousand Below with Thousand Below? Yeah. And with Savage, yeah, yeah. Savage Hands too, right? Yes. Yo, Savage Hands are like such sweethearts. I don't know. We had such a good time with them. Thousand Below, like we had already met before that. So we had toured with them with Capsize. That was like our first like cool tour. Um, but we ended up playing like a bunch of like VFW halls and there was like 20 kids that came out to every show. And it was really humbling for us because we had like DIY toured a bunch and like some of those shows, the draws were better than that tour. And like, we thought we were going into that tour. We like got way too much merch and shit. Cause we're like, Oh man, these cool bands are taking us out. And they were still like working on like getting their draw. This was like five, well not five years ago, but like four years ago, three years ago. Um, but yeah, then we went out with them and Savage Hands. Um, I actually went out with thousand below as their merch guy and took some photos when they went out with dance, Gavin dance. Um, so that, so that was really crazy. That's a that's a whole other scenario there. But I got a lot of fun uh, stories from there. Uh, when I went out with them on that tour, we were in Tampa, Florida, and they took me to a place called uh, Castle. It's a, like a goth like nightclub, uh, and there's like people like dancing in like cages, and there's like whips and shit like that. It, was, right. it was it was it was it was it was wild. But that was a wild night. Uh, Jimmy from Thousand Below definitely spanked me a few times. Uh, yeah, so that's probably my that's probably a good tour story. I like that. Um, I'll also tell you this about Jimmy. Another good tour story is um, sometimes he's kind of like sometimes he's crabby on the road, but it's just because he hasn't had a Cinnabon recently. So if there's anything you want to know about touring bands, yeah, exactly for real. Thank you. That was pretty good. Uh, like if if we don't stop at the truck stop that has the Cinnabon, like he's pissed. It's it's, it's problems. Yeah, no, yeah. it's problems for real. So. <laughs> He's gotta get his icing. He's gotta get his ice. Yeah. His daily icing. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, have you? Have you? BG? Have you listened to Avoid? Of course. Whatever okay. is is one of my favorite tracks. Uh, we we actually just partnered with with Ghost Killer Entertainment recently, and I've been having trouble breaking to to Thriller Records as far as like their uh, their management and and getting some of those bands on the show. But Avoid is one of the bands I'm targeting to get because I hear they're just the cool, coolest. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, that's, that shit'll happen. That'll happen. Michaela, have you heard of Avoid? Sorry, I'm on a Avoid uh, tirade right now. I have not. You have heard of Avoid. We played them before a couple times. Okay. Yes. Okay, then I. But have. but it hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> they're incredible. Check them out. Uh, they're they're definitely like a band that like yeah definitely good right off first listen. But really like understanding them as a band and like what they're doing is really fun because they're, they're like the f most fun band in our whole scene, in my opinion, like they just have a good time and it's really refreshing. So yeah, had to give it a little shout out there. Before I play stamina, I don't want to forget, uh, chat wants to know one of their particular songs in chat, uh, their favorite song is wrong way. And they want to know what went Tough. into the, the lyrical writing about that song. Oh shit. Okay. Um, well, let me just uh, get straight to the point. Wrong way down a one lane. And I'm wondering what happens if I just let go. Um, it is definitely a song that's about, uh, obviously like, um, tough times of life. It's about suicide. That's about suicide to be honest with you. And, uh, it's just a really interesting dressed up way of saying it, I suppose. But, um, yeah, wrong way. Uh, I gotta like refresh my memory here. One second. I'm going to, uh, pull up the notes so I can get more in tune with it. It's been actually a long time since we recorded all these songs as crazy as that is. Who do you usually record with? Uh, who's the, do you have a go-to producer you always go to, or do you kind of bounce we, around? And... Yeah, we bounce around for sure. Um, but we went to a, a guy named Sam. Uh, he's incredible. He's uh, lives in Toronto. He also like mixed the he mixed the like Drug Church record. He does all, he's done like all the recent Silverstein stuff. Um, he did like one of the recent like Interval records. Um, works with Young Culture, that band I mentioned earlier. Um, he's really cool. Very talented. Oh, he did like the most recent Devil Wars Prada too. Um, yeah, he's doing, he's, he's doing things. Yeah. He's doing heat. And honestly, like he, he did us a service by, uh, by working with us. Like 
the sort of bands he normally works with, like they typically obviously have bigger budgets than us because uh, they're bigger bands, you know, makes sense. Um, and he was willing to like go out on a limb for us and like work with our budget. And um, I don't know, man, it, it was it was so cool. Like so such a humbling he, experience. He believed in the music and, and the money didn't really matter because he saw the talent, he heard the music and he was like, I just want to work with these guys. You're awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. cool. Exactly. Yeah, that's that was super super humbling for us, and yeah, we were pumped up because uh, his his track record speaks for itself. Hell yeah, let's jam uh, stamina, which I believe is yeah the newest single. Do you want to do you want to prep it before I play it, or is there anything in particular you want us to know about stamina? Uh, this is the toughest song on the record, so if this isn't tough enough for you, uh, you might not like the the rest. It's probably not a good way to intro it. It's tough as <laughs> shit. Fucking get into it, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yes. It's the best cue up ever. Here we go. <laughs> Stamina from Dead Legs. If you're feeling it, please support them. Hit the follow button. Show some love. Yeah, please. Let's go. Yeah, it's a straight bop. So Sam Sam yeah. was the one that produced that one? Yeah. Do you, do you notice yeah, he- a, a different level of production in the quality when you when you bounce around to different different producers because I, I a lot of the bands that i talk to tend to find someone that, that they have like a chemistry or a formula with and they don't want to jump around to other producers so i'm just curious if there is um, it's a great question i actually have like a lot of opinions in this realm um i don't think a necessarily uh i'd say everybody has their thing you know um, like, cause we also worked with Eric Ron on our EP that came out before that. And that dude is a legend. That dude is insane. He's great. Writes bops. You know, he's still got like a song with Godsmack, like, uh, like on the top of the rock charts and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. He's, he's insane. So, um, I really liked, uh, Eric Ron was great with vocals and stuff like that. Sam for me was super comfortable to work with on the vocals, um, and everybody just got their own flavor, you know, like, uh, Sam, I would say had a more pop punk, um, background slash approach. Whereas like Eric Ron has more of like a hard rock approach. Um, so it is kind of, it's really fun to bounce around with different people and get different people's ears and what they have a background in that maybe they can lend some experience in and stuff like that. Um, but quality of mixes, I'd say everybody just. Uh, it's it's subject to opinion at a certain level, you know, like somebody like Sam and Eric, I may like one's mix more than the other, but they're both incredible mixes and it's just my personal opinion. You know what I mean? Um, like they're just both so, they're both so good that it's like, you can't, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I do want to ask you about Sharp Tone, but I, I would, I would like to ask it a different way. Let's say, let's rewind back to, you're not on a label whatsoever. What does a local band do that wants to be in your position? What advice would you give them to get the attention of a Sharp Tone or, or a similar label? Yeah, I mean, you're talking to the right person. I'll tell you why. Like, I grew up in the middle of nowhere. I grew up in southwest Colorado, um, which for those of you that don't know, that the Four Corners area, um, the nearest big city is Albuquerque, which is four hours away. Uh, Denver's seven hours away. Phoenix is seven hours away. Salt Lake City is six hours away. It's in the middle of nowhere. Um, I tried to do bands uh, for so long, um, and we and we would have to tour to get in front of anybody because where we're from, there's no nobody into that. There's no scene. Um, and eventually, a few of us decided, oh, let's go start a new band and let's move up to like the Seattle area and see what like a big market would do for us. So uh, honestly, for anybody that lives in a rural area. Um, and you really want to do music, I genuinely, unfortunately, do recommend moving to like uh, a, a bigger market. Even in today's world with the internet and stuff like that, uh, there's just too many resources um, and a bigger community to be able to build within. Um, so that's my, I mean, that's what I learned the most about. And um, don't be afraid to shoot your shot. If you, if you, like, if anybody DM'd, me or dms like our band account i'm probably going to respond just because i think it's fun i know when i was younger i would have wanted somebody to i would have been ecstatic if somebody uh sent a message back you know what i mean don't be afraid to shoot your shot ask for advice um and definitely focus in on your self-awareness it's good to know uh what you're doing what you're trying to do and where you're at um i'm gonna be honest none of my previous bands 
um, were, I don't, weren't good enough to, to, and they weren't, it's not because of bad musicianship, whatever, whatever. It's just, you know, you grow over time and whatever, but none of my other bands necessarily deserve to be in like, uh, this sort of position. Um, so like my self-awareness before though, when I was younger, was definitely like, I just don't get it. You know, I just don't get why this isn't going places. And then, you know, um, as I've grown as a musician, I feel like I, do kind of uh, understand now why previously it, it wasn't working, you know? So don't be afraid to ask for advice. And uh, yeah, that's, that's shoot your shot. Honestly, honestly, we got our first decent sized tour by uh, DMing uh, the vocalist of a band that we really liked who was like, yo, DM me your stuff if it doesn't suck. And if it sucks, I'm going to roast you essentially. And uh, our guitarist <laughs> submitted our stuff to him. And he got us, uh, and he got us in contact with his band's manager. That's how we got the same manager as them, and that's how, uh, before that manager left to go be a part of Rock Nation, um, he got he helped get us set up with uh, Sharp Tone and stuff like that. So that all came from shooting a shot, you know. Obviously, it's going to be a combination of um, when you're ready and um, luck with with having the right connection. But honestly. Luck isn't really an excuse because we shot our shot at least, you know, if we didn't do that, then it would have truly been up to luck. But uh, yeah, shoot your shot. Yeah, you got to try. You got to at least yeah. try. Yes. Uh, we are going to play wrong way here in just a second. But uh, I don't know if if uh, Sharp Tone or your manager prepared you for today as far as it, like, you know, this is a little bit of a crazy interview. It's different than the other ones. Did they I'm into that shit. Let's go. Wow. Okay, cool. So we do it. For shit, but I'm <laughs> so we do a <laughs> trivia segment. But you get to pick the trivia, and I'll explain more in a second. But do you happen to have any hot sauce? I I do, yes. Do you want me to go grab that? If you're down to get it, before you get it, I want to know what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Or if I ask you trivia, you get to pick it. If I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. If you do, you take a swig of hot sauce. You don't have to do this. Uh, you take a swig of hot sauce. If not... I'll take the swig of hot sauce and we'll spin the wheel to see what it lands on. I'm down. I just got to really think about this for a second. I'll Shit, tell you dude. what. Go grab it. You think about okay. it. I'll jam right. some wrong way. We're hanging out with Sumner Dead Legs. Please support them. <laughs> you brought back some goodies. What you got for us? All right. So I went out of the country uh, like... A year ago or so and um i brought back with me some hot sauces and they're all marie sharps um this is from belize uh but yeah this is yeah can you fucking believe that shit um <laughs> this one's pineapple habanero uh oh, this is regular good. habanero and to keep the the theme going this is smoked habanero as you can tell they grow habaneros in belize like crazy definitely did you think of a movie or a tv show Oh, uh, shit. Uh, In my okay. opinion, I would suggest going with a movie because TV show could be 60, 70 episodes. It's a little bit harder yeah. than just a two hour film or less. If we were doing TV show, it would be like, uh, it would be reality and it'd be The Bachelor. Um, but uh, since we're not, we're going to do, uh, I told you this, I actually wasn't joking, but uh, um, <laughs> what, what's that? You know, it's really sad as I can't think of the name of the movie off the top of my head right now. Why? Why can't I think of it? Uh, Who's in it? I got this. I got this. Uh, don't worry. I got this. Um, is it a comedy or an action or? It's a it's a comedy. It's it's like a every everybody watches it like ten times in high school. If you're if you're like my age. Days and confused. No, no, no. Kind of a comedy. Kind of a comedy. Why can I not? This is crazy. Does that ever happen to you? Dumb and like, Dumber. You know something too well. Newer. Uh, what, old school. We, uh, around that era, maybe a little newer. Why can't I remember it? What's really crazy? Okay, I got this. I have to find. I'm doing like backwards. The one with right Seth now. Rogen. The one was the one with Seth. Uh, uh, super bad. No, 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 super bad. Thank you. It's yes. Thank you. That's it. That's super it. Bad. That's the one. Yeah. I literally, awesome. I yeah. Literally, like, was blanking. <laughs> yeah. Little John. Yo, I have okay. I have about I have about 180 buttons ready to go at all times. Okay. There, okay. there it is. There we go. Man, we just gotta play that song. <laughs> Michaela, shoot him one more question real quick while I look up some super bad trivia. What's the favorite show 
that you've played so far? Oh, wow. Um, that's a really good question. Um, it's wild. I, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, for us, it would have to be uh, our first show in Seattle ever uh, as a band, because that's kind of where, like, I'm not from up here. We moved up here, and uh, the scene around here just really embraced us and took a chance on us. Um, we played the Fun House and sold it out. Uh, it was our first show ever in Seattle, so there's like, uh, I think like 150 or 200 people there, and it was just really humbling for like our, it just felt so cool just for like our first Seattle show to be packed out and for people to already be embracing us when two of us were from Colorado. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was, su it was super sick. That's sick. Yeah. Oh, we're going to stump yeah, you yeah, right yeah. now. Here we go. I, I believe it. In super bad. Uh huh. Seth, who I believe is played by Michael Sarah, drives what type of vehicle in the movie? Oh man. I need like a multiple choice on this. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you, you saw me. I know it's an old, like it's an older vehicle. What is it? It is a Geo Metro is the answer. Oh, and if man, I, Geo Metro. doesn't he deliver the pizza in the beginning and he's like, he's like 10 seconds late or is that a different movie? I think that's the same movie. I think that is the same movie. Uh, which hot People sauce have you chosen? Not. Which hot sauce have you I just did the habanero pepper sauce and it is a hot, it's very hot. I'll, I'll match you with a swig of uh, Mount Fiji Magma. Oh, okay. You're going <laughs> to hate me by the end of this because I uh, am not going to get any of these questions right. Dude, I, I thought it was like, because this is local band Smokeout, I was like, okay, this is going to be perfect for somebody who smokes weed 24-7. And then you have me doing trivia, which is I, I don't I don't know. Okay, so the reason I didn't even mention weed, I'm going to be honest with you, is when I was doing my research for for, for this interview, I noticed that there was a lot of uh, Dead Lakes is a Christian band all over the place, and <laughs> and I don't know if they if you're serious or I didn't want to be like, well, you, you want to get high with me real no, quick? That's <laughs> no, sometimes we just get on these vibes where we're like, we just really want to play into something. So yeah, like recent. That's really funny that you brought that up because recently uh, I just like was Google searching. I'm weird like this. I, I'm very like humbled as far as like I grew up like I was I never expected to be in any sort of position. So of course like I'm like about this life. Like I'm like I'm, I Google search dead lakes and like one of the most recent things that like came up was this post we made that said like come to a show or you're going to hell like for uh, for our past tour because uh, we were also yeah, just telling people like we're a real serious Christian band. Um, and you know if you don't come see the message like. I don't know if God's going to be too happy with you. So, uh, no, uh, definitely none of us are um, Christians. Have no problem with Christians. Have no problem with, well, I have, whatever. We won't get into it. I have problems with- It's uh, all love. With, it's all with love. The Christ well, I have a problem with the religion, but I don't have a problem with the people. You know, we're, we're all human beings, you know? We're doing our thing. So what you're saying is grab the bong and oh, let's burn baby. something? Is that what you're saying? So we get down? <laughs> So we get down one time. All right. All right. Let, let's do it. Yeah, that's so sick. Let's go, baby. Indica, sativa, or hybrid? What, what is your preference? You know, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a bougie, sm like a bougie smoker. So I'm going to say hybrid because I like to get like a cheap ounce and chill on it for a while. I, I respect my last job was at a dispensary. <clears throat> um, so I do respect the individuality of strains and the individuality of, uh, you know, different, you know, different types for different reasons. Um, but at the end of the day, I just like getting high, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I can dig it. I can dig it. Pretty good vibe. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm broke. So high, like a hybrid ounce, you know, you could have it all day. It's great. You know, it's right in the middle, baby. Yeah. It's, what, it's... what about you? Uh, probably sativa. Probably. I, I have, I have born and raised ADHD and I try to do indicas at night, hybrid. but I just have like a, where is it? I just have like a giant jar that's just full of nugs, so I don't really know exactly what I'm smoking when I grab one. But I, yeah, I kind of hope it's sativa, just just to go with my ADHD bounce and keep me up. And yeah, no, no, active. I, I, I get that. I respect that. Uh, yeah, with ADHD for me, like uh, hi hybrids typically work pretty well. Um, uh, they, they, they kind of chill me out, but, uh, honestly, like my focus is shit though with hybrids with sativa, I will admit like my focus is in a good place and stuff like that. So it would be nice to be more mindful about what weed I'm smoking. And I appreciate you BG for bringing that to my attention. 
Sure. My <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Sumner, what, I got a couple of questions left for you, then we'll let you go. We know you're a busy man, but uh, what, what is, just a, just a fun one, what is the worst show ever that you were ever involved in in any band? Everything went wrong at this show. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, yeah. So it would be the last run that we did with uh, my last band. I was in a band called Spirit, and um, we did a tour with a band called Castaway from California. And... Um, we had um, a new guitarist at the time who ended up being like uh, one of the original guitarists of Dead Lakes too, um, and so he's joining the band like midway through or like at the end of this band for us to start Dead Lakes. But um, what happened was so in that band I played guitar and sang, so it's just a four piece, um, and it's his first show ever with us. We we're in San Francisco. This this guy has never been in a band before so he's in our band and the first show my amp head goes out and like it's his first show ever with us and he has to do like the whole thing by himself um and also we're playing at like we're, i think it was called like i think it was like the honey the honey hive or something like that don't roast me uh, san franciscans i love you it was <laughs> a, a long it was a long time ago um and there was like it was like kind of like a cool person spot where like they liked like cool rock bands and we were too like we were too too scene bopper i'd say probably in a way um and so it's already like kind of an awkward energy but like we're cool people we like to vibe with anybody um but still it was like kind of already an awkward energy and then my amp head goes out so you have one guitar and you know this is back when like you're playing small venues there's no backing tracks like of support with like pads and synths or anything it is raw it's a fucking you got one guitar <laughs> that's gainy as shit uh, a bass and a drummer and vocals in a tiny ass place where the vocals are clipping the the speakers and yeah it was fucking <laughs> wild bro it was, it, so are you just so are you just standing there playing and, and no one can hear you or like what do you do in that scenario when when your I, head I, goes I, out I, well i don't know i felt awkward as shit dude i probably uh so if i remember correctly <laughs> Um, it was cutting in and out, so like it, it was really fucked. So I just kept playing because it felt the most natural. Like I was used to doing the performance that way, I guess you know. So I felt unnatural with a without a guitar at that time. In in Dead Lakes, I have only ever not, I have never played guitar, so I've just done vocals. Gotcha. Uh, well, yeah, not Mc live. I do I do help. I do write like a lot of the stuff, but. So you so when you write uh, Dead Lakes music, you you may pick up a guitar and be like, play this, bro. Or is that what you're telling the guitarist to play? Yeah, well, uh, well, uh, our last guitarist, um, he helped write a lot of this record for sure. So I'm definitely gonna make sure that I do the right thing by giving, uh, giving him his credit. Uh, yeah, he definitely like did a lot of backbone of this record that we're about to release soon, and these two couple tracks. Um, but yes, uh, I do. I'm I'm just a very good co-pilot also in that way and uh have taken the lead on quite a few songs but i do typically i don't know i like the executive producer sort of role where like you hear somebody's idea and you and you go like okay that's cool but change like these couple things change these note structures maybe change the rhythm of how you're playing it um cool now we got that line to sound how it should sound in my opinion you know uh i was always kind of that guy really well um and i i think i'm i like was the main writer on like four Dead Lakes tracks that are out, and then the rest I was kind of like that role. So, I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Michaela, what, what would be your final question for Summer? All-time favorite album. Ooh. Oh, shit. Whoa. Okay. I, 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 this, I know that you know that this is an unfair question, so I need you yeah. to also allow me to give two records. Yeah, of and course. Th the yeah. first two records that come to mind um, are If You Leave by Daughter, um, if you've never heard of it, um, if you're ever just like, if you ever just l want to rest in your depression and sadness and you just want to feel more depressed and sad, no. go, go listen to that record. It ruined my life for like years. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. Seriously, like, r like wrecked my life for years. It's the, it, but it's like that good of a record, you know? Um, and then Frank Ocean's Blonde, probably. Uh, would be 
my other favorite record of all time. The the neighborhood has a couple, a few really good records that probably are all up there as well. So I have to say that. Um, and I know you didn't ask for the bonus content, but the record oh, that go. got me uh, into into this scene in general was the uh, original Deadly or the original Devil Wears Prada uh, record. That's what got me into like this scene of music. The original one, like their first, first, like their first yeah. one when they're oh, like geez. super Christian, when they were like rocking out uh, at like th this Christian fest, like outdoors uh, that happens in the Midwest or whatever. I forgot wh which one it was, but they still do it to this day, I think. But uh, but yeah, it was like that video just got me into into uh, this this scene as a whole. And then that record, I was just like, whoa, this slaps like the one with like the uh, it's like kind of gray tones and has like the, the statue uh, of the uh, like angel woman on it or something like that okay i think that's what it is i think that's what it is i think the first one i ever heard from them was the one with the tree branch going all over the the, oh. the, the really popular one uh i don't remember yeah yeah caught off the top of my head but uh final two questions for you sir one serious one one not serious whatsoever let's go the serious one is what is and i ask almost everybody we have in this show this question what is yeah. uh the the most important piece of advice somebody in the music industry has given you that you're willing to share something that that made you take your career more seriously it was an eye opener something that you're willing to share with us that would be advice for maybe a band that's watching right now okay advice for a band that's watching right now okay uh i like that context um Let me let me think about this for for a second, because I want to make I want to make sure it's good. It's juicy. Um, I want to say um, don't take anything personal. Uh, I think I think I know that sounds crazy, but like you know, a lot of times we let our ego get in the way of things, a way in the way of us learning, in the way of us growing. Um, so you can't take things personally. Like yeah, like you may believe in your dream wholeheartedly but somebody else might not see the vision and you can't take that personally um and all you can do is take any critiques they have because it's always good you know uh, every avenue you're taking it's good to take the critiques of those that you're searching for you know feedback from you got to be able to take the, that, that negative too um but yeah don't take it personal like sometimes um you know there's a lot of people involved in bands on their teams and stuff like that so if you're friends with like a, a band that is a little more up and coming and they're like doing slightly bigger tours and stuff. They may have a team that won't, that kind of won't allow them to do that tour with you, you know, um, and stuff like that. Like that's happened, you know, to us before and whatnot, you know, you can't take that personal. They're still your friends, stuff like that. It, it's not worth burning a bridge over, you know, the, in this or that occasion, you know, I think that, uh, just letting your ego take a, a second to the side and really view the situation as a whole. Um, that's the best advice I could give to anybody. There were so many times growing up, I was reaching up to, you know, different, uh, you know, outlets, magazines, you know, other bands and stuff like that. And everybody's a human, you know, they got their own thing going on and it's, you know, it isn't always about you, you know, it's, and so being able to, to not burn those bridges worked out really well in the end for our band. Um, because even when people have, you know, done us wrong or whatever in the past, we uh, knew that there was a bigger reason. We understood the dynamics of the situation. We we're able to go, you know what? It's chill. It's this isn't worth burning a bridge over. And then those same people came back to do really well by us, you know. So it sounds uh, like it sounds like you yeah. have a big heart. That's what I'm hearing. You have a big heart. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's just that's just it, 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 yeah. It's tough sometimes, but it's a good thing to have. So you can really, uh, I don't know, understanding humans. You want people to see you as your whole self, you know, not as a fragment of whatever they get, you know, maybe I miss a DM or something like that. I don't want that person to think like, uh, you know, I'm just think I'm too cool or, uh, whatever. I'm too busy. You know, uh, I totally get it. I totally get yeah. it. Uh, the not so serious question whatsoever is, uh, what do the Carolina Panthers do to fix the team? So they're in the playoffs next year. I'm a diehard football fan. I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. Skull to the bowl. Respect. I uh, We've never won you know, one. I, I grew up in uh, Michigan, so uh, you know, football has been miserable for me forever. Um, so I are you really, a Wolverines uh, fan or a Spartan? Well, I never. Okay, I'm not. I was never into like college. Okay. Football. Um, my dad took me to some Eastern Michigan games because that's where he went to school. Um, but uh, I grew up a Lions fan, so 
I'm sorry to hear we're that. We're pretty trash. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty trash. It's the fail button um, right here. I will say, typically... Yeah. They're, they're turning it around right now. I mean, yeah, they've they won six of the last dude, seven. I, yeah. I watched... Did, Including you watch beating like us. The, do you watch, like, the Hard Knocks series or whatever on HBO? Absolutely. And I watched yeah. the in-season one with the Cardinals. Yeah, a mess. yeah. I, I, I thought the. Uh, are you from Arizona? Is that is that no. why you like Arizona teams? Oh, okay. No, no, I'm a, I'm a Vikings fan, but okay, I'm not right. from okay. Minnesota. I'm not from Minnesota. I'm I'm all over the place like you are with Suns and, Got and, you. and Panthers. Yeah. Um. I, okay, but to answer your question, I probably I, to me, if a team isn't getting there for a long enough time, you got to realize it's the, like maybe partially the organization or you know GM or something like that. You know. Um. I haven't watched enough of this football season to have a, a an opinion if I'm being very real with you. Uh. But yeah, we could talk basketball all day. Let's go Lakers. We're over the Suns uh, tonight. It's going down. Hey, I want to <laughs> see LeBron do well. I want to see him end his career doing doing some good things and going out, you know, a winner. He's so he's way- he's expected. I mean, as long as he stays on the court, he's doing almost 30 a game. He might he may may break uh Kareem's record Kareem's this year. Record? It's possible. That would be insane. That'd be insane. No, he, he that's who he is as a player though. He can do whatever he wants when he wants to. I think the only issue with his game as he's gotten older is his mental. Like he, it's it's when he turns the switch on in the game, he's gonna be good. When when he's like gets frustrated or something with a play and he gives up on the whole game, he doesn't ever mentally let himself get back into it because he could dominate. He could take that ball to the paint ten drives in a row. He's gonna make six of them. You know, mm-hmm. like they're gonna be they're gonna be up. So he he is a beast. Yeah. Sumner, when yeah. does, when does the record come out? It comes out uh, in March sometime. It hasn't it's been announced the actual date and all that. No, no, but it's okay. but it's but it's chilling. We're we're not a huge band with like some you know where we have to keep it hush hush or like have a crazy announcement. Uh, it'll surprise enough people when we do announce it, you know. Uh, uh, so like that's cool with me. Um, and that uh, the announcement for it will happen probably uh, beforehand, and maybe we'll get some more music or something too. So. Well, we look forward to March. This was an absolute pleasure, sir. We had a blast. I hope Incredible. you did too. Yeah, Thank you so awesome. much. You're, you're welcome back anytime. Maybe maybe six or seven months from now, we can do a follow-up and catch up and, and pick your brain about how the last six, seven months have been since the record came out, tours, life in general, and of course, hit some more bowls and bongs, of course. That sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, we got to do that. More, more bowls, more bongs, and hopefully more tours. If we don't do a tour... We're not doing any more interviews because I'm not gonna do the band thing. We we got to get on the road this year, and it's got to be consistent. Like, uh, I want to go out and crush this shit. I want to get in front of people. That's literally, I know I'm I'm so confident that that's the strongest part of like who we are as a band. Is when when people come see us at a show, they're gonna they're gonna vibe because it's a fun time. You're focused. I love it, yes. ladies go, and baby. gentlemen. Yes. Sumner yes. of Dead Lakes, please give them a hell yeah and hit that follow button for them. Let's go! Give me a hell yeah! Stay safe. Hell yeah! Stay safe, Smokey. Stay safe, you as well. Cheers. Cheers. Love y'all.